The Gen 4 Fossils. Beasts of dinosaurs for sure. A fun fact, these were the first fossil Pokemon to actually be dinosaurs. All of the previous Fossilmon were things like Ziphosura or Crenoids. The closest you get is Aerodactyl, but it is different. It's a pterosaur, which is not a dinosaur. But then, in Generation 4, we got a Ceratopsid and a Pachycephalosaurus. Real dinosaurs, how exciting! But what more is there to their designs, their origins, and what makes them tick? And why is Bastiodon so ugly? All this and more on today's video. Are you spending your day stacking stones and chasing down mammoths? No, you're not a fossil? Well then maybe today's sponsor is for you. Harry's is a personal care brand that delivers a close, comfortable shave at a fair price as low as $2 per refill. I keep a chin strap, but gosh do I hate the feeling of a stubble neck and the wife hates the mustache, so... They gotta go. Harry's offers sharp German steel blades from their own German factory so they can ensure high quality at factory direct prices. These blades then connect to a high quality weighted rubber gripped handle that feels great and doesn't slip out of your hand. And the foaming shaving gel shampoos and deodorants smell so nice. All this and more delivered right to your door. It's easy. Plus, Harry's supports great causes, giving 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care to those in need. You'll get a five blade razor, weighted handle, travel cover, and their foaming shave gel. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. And with a 100% money back guarantee, there's nothing to lose. Redeem your trial set for only $3 today at harrys.com slash Loxton. Let's start with the cool one. Wait. It's a dinosaur. I can't use that word. Let's start with the radical one. <laughs> Rampardos and Granados are both very obviously based on the family of dinosaurs known as the Pachycephalosaurus, which were a clad of Ornithischian dinosaurs that almost exclusively lived during the late Cretaceous period, dating between about 85 and 65 million years ago. Uh, that's, that's, that's 85 million also, not, not 85, like we weren't riding Pachycephalosaurus in World War I. Unless. Also mainly exclusively in the Northern Hemisphere. These Pokémon appear to be mostly inspired by P. Wyomingensis. I wonder where they were discovered. These guys were a little on the smaller side for Rampardos, but it's got the spikes and the rammy head. Cranidos specifically may pull more from the Micropachycephalosaurus just because it's so small. But another possible inspiration for Rampardos specifically is the Draco Rex, Hogwartsia, whose skull looks like a spiky dragon head. It scares poor Shield on. <laughs> Uh, but hence the name. I mean, Hogwartsia, Dracorex, paleontologists are nerds. But yeah, when you look at Rampardos, it has lots of spikes on its head, and some of them are on the underside of the dome, more towards the muzzle. And if you look at the Dracorex, it not only has a lot of spikes, but those spikes are also below the dome and on the muzzle. Whereas Cranidos has less spikes, and none of those spikes are below the dome. They are osteoderms, which are more like bumps as opposed to spikes. So therefore, it would be more like just a generic Pachycephalosaurus. The fun thing about all this is that the current consensus on Dracorex is that it doesn't actually exist. Well, it does, clearly, there's fossils, but it may not exist as its own species. It's probably just a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. Paleontologists and paleobiologists currently believe that as Pachys get older, their head bones get less complicated and thus less spiky. So a baby would have a more spiky head than a teenager one, and a teenager one would be spikier than an adult one. So really, if the Rampardos lion was truly accurate to our current paleontological understanding, Cranidos would be the spikier one, and Rampardos would be the one with only a few spikes. But that wouldn't be as cool. But still, the more you know. But speaking of Pokemon dinosaur inaccuracies, which is totally fine, it's a fantastical world, they can do whatever. A lot of their Pokedex entries talk about ramming prey down with their heads. Which, if you consider its real world inspirations, is uh... Silly. For two reasons. The quicker of the two reasons is that Pachycephalosaurus were mostly herbivores. 
with a side of insectivore in there for a few of this species, and therefore they wouldn't have any prey beyond maybe insects that just happen to be on the leaf they're eating. Now go try and headbutt a grasshopper and report back, tell me how well you did. Well then, if not for prey hunting, then was it for competition? For breeding rights? Like modern rams and deer? Well, also no, this whole headbutting thing is a myth that was popularized thanks to the second Jurassic Park movie, and it's very likely flat out wrong. Curse you, Steven Spielberg and Michael Crichton for making memorable yet ultimately wrong claims about dinosaurs and paleontology in general. Well, I guess they weren't wrong so much as a little misguided. Most paleontologists agree that because of the way the neck and head are built on Pachycephalosaurus's, frequent headbutting would be a pretty terrible idea. Now, they may have used headbutting in a weird lizard joust for finding mates every once in a while, but based on the scars and lesions found on Packies, it seems more like they would whack into the sides of each other at about the shoulders, mostly with the side of their upper head instead of head on like they're always portrayed as doing. Think about how giraffes fight. Yeah, I like that. The fact that their shoulders are especially robust for ornithischians lends further credence to this theory, not to mention the fact that although they do have rather thick skulls, their skulls are just thick, not thick. So therefore, they aren't thick enough to stop the head injuries, to make constantly ramming into things a good business model. Even if they had protection similar to woodpeckers, the scale of all of this would still lead to plenty of drain bramage, which typically is not great for survival. Now for etymology, Cranidos is named that because they have a big cranium, the fancy word for skull or head, hence the Spanish channel I tried doing being called Gicranio. And this is fitting because they have gigantic heads in comparison to their bodies. The dose then may be there simply because it makes the name sound more like a dinosaur name. Dos is close to Don, and many dinosaurs and other ancient reptiles end with Don, like the Iguanodon, the Dimetrodon, etc. But also, Dinos is short for dinosaur, and you can swap the D and the N around, you get Nidos. Cranidos. Cranidos. Rampardos then clearly has ram in there, like the sheep, the ram, also like a battering ram, which functions similarly to how people think these dinosaurs thought. But then what's a pardos? Well, a rampart is a protective barrier or bulwark, a broad embankment raised as a fortification and usually surmounted by a parapet, a wall-like ridge. Think of a castle getting ready for an attack. The rampart is where you would put your crossbowmen and giant log shooters. Ramparts are essentially walls with offensive properties, or where your own attackers would be to shoot arrows and bolts and stab people trying to climb the wall with spears, or searingly hot oil, or boulders, or spike traps. In fact, a lot of ramparts had spikes on them to begin with. It also makes them look more intimidating. And if you look at Rampardos' head, it looks very much like a ridge of spikes. And its thick skull is basically a protective barrier for its brain. And I mean, dinosaurs are old, castles are old, so it's perfect. Especially considering that the ramparts are, in a way, sort of a castle's offensive parts. And Rampardos has had the highest attack stat of any non-legendary Pokemon when it was new. And even back then, it was only beaten by attack form Deoxys. And also, the castle theming fits perfectly with its partner Fossilmon, Bastiodon. This is Shieldon, what it evolves from, but uh, Bastiodon. I mean, look at its face. It's literally a castle, especially the classical, popular, cartoony depiction of castles with the two towers on the sides and the ramparts up top. I mean, those spots are literally window shaped. And Bastion? What's a Bastion? Some sort of crab? Well, no. It's the projecting part of a fortification built at an angle to the line of a wall so as to allow defensive fire in several directions, typically in forts and castles. And yeah, its jaw and teeth jut out from its face, and so do the spikes on its knees? 
Shoulders? Let's just go with legs. A bastion can also mean something is well protected and defended, like this island is the final bastion of this endangered species. And this fits well, as Bastiodon had the sixth highest defense out of all Pokemon in Gen 4, and has the sturdy ability. Oh, and since we're talking about its name, the Dawn simply is there because of dinosaurs. Again, Dawn is Latin for tooth, and dinosaurs have teeth, so we named a lot of them after that fact. Shield on then is just shield tooth because its whole face is a shield, and it has teeth. Uh, but enough etymology, let's get into their origins now. Shieldon and Bastiodon. They're both based on Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Yes, like the Triceratops, but the real question is, what Ceratopsian? Because it definitely is not the Triceratops itself. For one, neither one has the famous three horns on the face that Triceratops is named after. For another, Bastiodon's crest shape isn't even close to a Triceratops's. And it's way too big to be compared to a Triceratops. And while Shieldon's is kinda similar in shape, it just isn't quite right, and neither is the size in comparison to its body, even considering it's Pokemonified. But speaking of crest shapes and sizes, let's use that to try and figure out which Ceratopsians they might be based on. So first off, let me explain that amongst Ceratopsians, they mostly branch off into two main subfamily branches, the Centrosaurines and the Chasmosaurines. And the quick and dirty way to tell the difference between the two is that the Centrosaurines have smaller frills and crests with more or just bigger horns and bumps, whereas the Chasmosaurines have bigger frills and crests, but have less or smaller bumps and spikes on the top of the crest. Obviously, there are exceptions to that rule, but it generally holds pretty true. So looking at Bastiodon, that right away eliminates about half of the Ceratopsian genera. So, based on how huge its crest is, and how there are only two spikes on top of the crest, it is most likely mainly inspired by a Chasmosaurine. And hey, while we're here, let's look at the Chasmosaurus itself, because look at that. It's, it's basically a real life version of Bastiodon. Rectangle crest. Check. Two horns basically right on top of the eyes. Check. Two big spikes on the outer top edges of the crest with smaller bumps in between. Check. The only thing we're really missing is the third horn below the eyes. But given that Bastiodon has this big nose ridge thing? You could basically say it's a nose horn, like a Chasmosaurus's, and the bottom of it could be easily interpreted as the rostrum, which is the beak-like upper jawbone that Ceratopsians have, which, fun fact, is wholly unique to Ceratopsians. No other animal has evolved it. Not to mention that Chasmosaurus probably has two big ovalish indents in its crest based on the lack of any bone there. And Bastiodon simply has four of these to resemble the windows in castle walls. Oh, and before we move on, this nose ridge thing could also be a reference to some depictions of cavemen with bone-in-nose piercings, an ancient fashion statement that's at least 4,000 years old and is still practiced by some indigenous groups today. And also, also, it may pull from some heavy machinery, such as excavators and bulldozers, and its shiny color only makes that more apparent with its bright yellowy color. So there's a lot to Bastiodon, and I like that a lot. So now, Let's look at its Prevo. Shieldon is a cute and tiny little thing, isn't it? This is life size. But being so tiny, that's, that's unusual. For Ceratopsians, right? They were usually one and a half tons at minimum. Whereas Shieldon is a foot tall, which even for a young Ceratopsian is teeny. Well, hmm. Uh, Ceratopsians couldn't have always been big old boys and girls. Could they have? Evolution didn't just say, poof, now you're a huge crested lizard. So were the first Ceratopsians small? Oh, absolutely. If you look at early Ceratopsians, such as the Protoceratops, they were tiny. According to trusty old Wikipedia, Protoceratops only grew about as big as a sheep. Plus, its crest shape and size in comparison to its body and lower face is very similar to Shieldon's. Shieldon, also, doesn't have any horns or spikes, which seems unusual for a Ceratopsian, but neither did Protoceratops, because they were one of the earliest Ceratopsians to evolve, and they just hadn't evolved to have spikes and bumps yet. The only thing that could have made Shieldion look even more like a Pokemon version of a Protoceratops is if it had proto feathers running along the lower half of its tail, which we have a lot of proof of in Protoceratops, and Poseidon. What was that word? Psittacosaurus? Uh, 
another early Ceratopsian. But given that the general populace's understanding of dinosaurs hasn't caught up to the fact that many of them had protofeathers, it's forgivable. But just this once. Now, as for what kind of shield, well, it's about as generic of a medieval hammered round dome shield as you can get. So I don't think it's referencing any particular one. Also, apparently, that clearly metal-looking shield that it has, it's not metal. The Pokedex says that it's just a really, really hard hide. That's somehow less believable than a colossal steel-coated diamond snake. Oh well. Let me know what you think about these guys down in the comments below. And are you excited to get them again? Eh? Gen 4 remakes? Eh? Never stop using your noggin. <laughs>